Hello everyone! Welcome to today's YouTube video. At napaka-interesting nga ng YouTube video natin ngayon because it's the first episode of our Tech Talk web series. Yung Tech Talk nga uh, is a web series na kung saan i-feature natin yung diverse set of very outstanding na mga scholars, mga scientists, uh, so that we could discuss and talk about the research study in the hope na ma-inspire tayo lahat hindi lang mga criminologists, hindi lang mga forensic scientists, but everyone na mag-engage din into research na makaka-advance ng mga respective fields natin. So ito nga ang speaker natin ngayon, and napaka-interesting because she's a Pinay uh, scholar, particularly from Davao, na pumunta sa United States para mag-aral at nakapag-develop uh, siya ng isang probiotic beer. So two words, ha? Beer and then probiotic. So, alam natin yung beer, syempre, lahat tayo, di ba? Uh, we know beer, it's something na iniinom natin for different occasions. I am not drunk. But probiotic, meaning mga yakult, mga yogurt. So, itong Pilipina na to, eh, naisip na i-combine yung dalawa na yon, Yung isang uh, uh, beer and at the same time, uh, probiotic. So, bakit niya kaya naisip ito? Paano niya ginawa? At uh, ano kaya ang naging reaksyon ng uh, Amerika, ng international food science community, dito sa imbensyon niya? So, without any further ado, no, invite na natin ang ating resource speaker. Actually, our first ever resource speaker ng ating Tech Talk na si Ms. Kriza. So, Kriza, thank you very much for accepting the invitation to be featured niya dito sa ating Tech Talk, isang web series where we will feature uh, outstanding scholars and scientists from all over the world. You're welcome. And it's an honor for me na ma-feature yung research ko sa Tech Talk. And I'm so amazed sa initiative mo to create this YouTube channel for criminologists and also for people from different fields. So before siguro tayo dumako sa ating talakayan, eh, introduce muna natin ang resource speaker natin for today. Ang resource speaker natin na si Kriza ay graduate ng Bachelor of Science in Food Technology sa University of the Philippines, Pindanao. At siya nga lang naman ay graduate as class valedictorian noong 2014. And then after that, siya ay nagturo sa Department of Food Science and Chemistry sa nasabing prestigious institution. And in 2017, nakasama ko nga si Kriza sa labing anim na mga scholars ng Fulbright at ng Commission on Higher Education ng mga faculty members from diverse fields from all over the Philippines na mag-aral nga ng graduate studies nila sa Estados Unidos. At itong ang si Kriza ay nag-aral ng master's degree in food science sa Louisiana State University. At siya ay graduate noong 2019. So without any further ado, Kriza, no, let's talk about the research study na ginawa mo which is a probiotic beer. Yung pinakaunang tanong ko sa iyo is, Ano bang naisip mo at naimbento mo at dinecide mo na ang master's thesis mo ay eh gumawa ng isang beer na probiotic? Okay. Well, I'm a beer lover so yun yung main reason and sabi kasi nila na we should work on what we love. That's why I tried to explore making my own beer. So yun yung, yun yung isa sa main reasons bakit ito ang aking naging master's thesis. Another reason was that May interest na kasi ako sa lactic acid bacteria. Gawa nung undergraduate study ko on lactic acid bacteria as a biopreservative. So I wanted to explore lactic acid bacteria further. And yung lab mates ko kasi sa lab ko sa LSU, they've been working on probiotics. So sabi ko, why not put probiotics in the beer and see if the probiotics would survive in beer para mabigay yung benefits sa body natin just like any other probiotic product. So, nice, yun yun. And nice. of course, I also wanted to make a difference in the food science community by producing something that is novel. So, yun yung main reason why I worked on this topic. Yung pangalawang tanong ko, eh, may connection dun sa sagot mo. Diba? So, naisip mo na maglagay ng mga probiotic bacteria sa beer. Ano naman ang benefits or significance ng paglalagay ng probiotic bacteria sa beer na iinumin ng mga future customers mo? Okay. Kasi we know that probiotic bacteria or probiotic microorganisms in general, they provide benefits sa ating gastrointestinal health, di ba? And a lot of these probiotic products na nasa market ngayon, they are dairy. So hindi nakikater yung mga may lactose intolerance or yung mga may allergy sa dairy food. Mm. Kaya new matrices for probiotics are being investigated. So isang possible matrix yung beer. 
So, di ba, a lot of people love beer. It's the most consumed alcohol globally. So, malaki talaga yung potential ng beer. So, yun, it, it provides an alternative for uh, delivery system ng probiotic bacteria. Wow, para sa mga lactose intolerant pala to, tsaka sa may allergy sa mga dairy na hindi makainom ng uh, Yakult, mga ganun ng mga products at hindi makainom din ng uh, makakain ng mga yogurt products, 'di ba? Kasi mga dairy yung mga 'yon. Krisa para siguro sa mga curious na viewers natin, paano ba ginagawa ang beer? Yung beer, meron na siyang four main ingredients which are malt, water, hops, and yeast. So, pag meron ka na nung apat, you can just play around with the formulation and you can already make beer. Oh, wow. Kriza, di ba ang beer ay may ethanol, so alcohol, at yung alcohol, pinapatay niyo yung bacteria, di ba? So, paano yun? Di ba yung mga probiotic uh, bacteria mo, hindi ba sila namatay nung linagay mo sila dun sa beer? Actually, I tried putting the probiotic bacteria in commercial beer. So, dalawang types yung ginawa ko. Hindi sila umabot ng hours. So it was very challenging for me at first. And since I can control the conditions ng beer, I tried different formulations, in-adjust ko yung amount ng ingredients, and eventually I was able to come up with the formulation kung saan nabuhay yung bacteria. Pero I did something para mas mabuhay pa sila. So dun po mapasok sa picture yung durian rind powder. So parang sila yung naging protectant ng probiotic bacteria. Ah, so, Krisha, para sa mga hindi nakakaalam, ikaw ay taga Davao at ang ginamit mong ingredient ay durian. Pero anong parte ba ng durian yung ginamit mo? Yung ginamit ko yung durian rind, yung balat niya, kasi nga yung balat niya, parang more than half ng weight ng durian is yung balat lang. So, malaki talaga yung waste na napoproduce. So, ginamit ko yung balat kasi currently hindi naman kasi siya utilized. So, pwede nating mabigyan ng economic value yung durian rind. Wow. So, yung white part ng balat ng durian. Yung white part ng balat ng durian. Pero ano ba yung nasa white part ng balat ng durian kaya siya na-involved dito sa research mo at naging beneficial siya? Nakakatulong ba ito para i-preserve yung mga probiotic, mag-survive sila dun sa beer na dinevelop mo? Yung rind ng durian, it has a lot of fiber. So, yung fiber doon, yun yung nag-serve as immobilizer, yun yung term na ginagamit natin na pang-protect doon sa probiotic bacteria. So, wow, madami palang mga potential benefit itong na-develop mo na probiotic beer, no? Hindi lamang health benefit but also economic benefit din. And of course, hindi naman talaga healthy ang beer, lalo na kapag hindi siya in moderation, no? Pero at least, di ba, meron kang health benefit na nakukuha at nakakatulong ka rin sa economy in, uh, later on. Kabilib-bilib ka talaga at kahanga-hanga. So, Kriza, no? Uh, eco- uh, may economic benefits, may health benefit itong beer na uh, dinevelop mo. Pero ang tanong ng lahat. Ano ba ang lasa ng beer na to? Ito ba ay kasing sarap ng mga beer na meron ngayon sa market? Unfortunately, Christian, no, hindi na namin natikman yung probiotic beer itself because it was beyond the scope of my study. Yung natikman lang namin yung beer without the probiotics and so far, mas sarap naman siya with an alcohol uh, percentage na 4.39. Mas sarap naman siya. Pero for future studies, pwede na natin isama yung sensory evaluation doon. Mm, okay, so aabangan natin yan. At gagawin mo ba yan dito sa Pilipinas? Hopefully, if ma-replicate natin yung conditions, then why not? So, Krisa, balita ako, eh, sobrang dami mo daw na award na nakuha nung nasa United States ka at nag-aaral nga ng Master of Science in Food Science at Louisiana State University. Ah, kami kasi, ako, naniniwala ako na tayo mga Pinoy, eh, mahilig tayo mag-celebrate ng kapwa natin Pinoy, lalo na pag nagsasaksid abroad, yun nga tinatawag na Pinoy Pride, di ba? So, maaari mo ba i-share sa amin yung ibang mga highlights ng mga achievements mo nung ikaw ay nasa United States at nag-aaral nga ng Master's Degree? Noong 2018, first time ko sumali sa International Food Science Conference. So it's called the IFT, or Institute of Food Technologists Incorporated Annual Meeting. So dun ko na-present for the first time ang aking study. And I won third place sa poster competition ng Biotechnology Division. So it was a very um, overwhelming experience for me kasi nga first time kong sumali sa ganun kalasing conference and nanalo pa ako ng award na yun. 
And of course, it would not have been possible if not for the help of my advisor, mga lovemates ko. So, I would also like to express my gratitude sa lahat ng tulong nila. Uh, aside from that, nung graduate ako last year, I got an award as the Outstanding Master's wow. Student. Wow. So, this was awarded by the Honor Society of Phi Kappa Phi LSC Chapter. Kasi member din ako ng Phi Kappa Phi dito sa... Philippines, sa UP chapter. Mm-hmm. And I also got a, a travel award, International Student Travel Award. That was in the same conference in 2018 kung saan binigyan ako ng travel grant to present my research in Chicago. Wow. Grabe. Talagang kahanga-hanga nga. And on top of that, you are a Fulbright Scholar. No? So, isa sa mga pinaka-prestigious na scholarship sa buong Pilipinas. And at the same time, you are a CHED Scholar or the Commission on Higher Education in the Philippines na ina-award nga exclusively sa mga faculty members and staff ng uh, mga higher education institution dito sa Pilipinas. Hmm. At saka, naging grantee din ako ng Delta Kapagdama Fellowship. So they've been very supportive sa studies ko while I was in, in LSU in the U.S. So I'd also want to express my appreciation sa lahat ng tulong nila. Krisa, marami sa mga viewers natin ay mga college students at saka mga professors sa may ibang mga university. So baka gusto nilang mag-aral sa Amerika in the future. So bahira bang mag-aral sa Amerika and nabalance mo ba yung studies and at the same time yung opportunity mo to travel and to have fun and to explore their culture doon nga sa United States of America? For me, na-enjoy ko naman yung buong stay ko for two years. I can say that I made the most of my stay in the U.S. Especially if meron kang support system. Kahit pa malayo ka sa family mo, thankful tayo ngayon na pwede natin silang makausap anytime. And of course, yung support system din natin while nasa U.S. tayo. So, pasalamat din ako sa mga friends, sa uh, lahat ng mga nandun for me. Especially nung uh, naoperahan ako last year, I got a knee surgery. So, I was out of school for ilang weeks then, And for one semester, I was on a wheelchair, on crutches. So, hindi ko pa rin in-expect na makaka-graduate ako on time. So, nagpapasalamat pa rin ako. And na, uh, I made the most of the chance naman to travel around the U.S. So, ilang states din yung nabisit ko. And I was also active in extracurricular activities. I was involved in the Food Science Club, sa International Student Association. So, when I was there, sabi ko na hindi ko sasayangin yung every day. Kasi nga, minsan lang darating yung opportunity na makapag-aral sa U.S. under a Fulbright Scholarship for free. So, lahat ng mga opportunities, I tried to grab them. So, yun. Thank, thank you, Fulbright Chad Scholarship. Yes. So, Kriza, maraming salamat sa pagsagot sa uh, lahat ng aking mga katanungan ngayong umaga. And I'm sure yung mga viewers natin, eh, sobra sila na natuto sa gawa. Uh, ako mismo, dami ko natutunan sa conversation natin na to. And hopefully, yeah, huwag kang mapapagod na i-share yung, yung knowledge and expertise uh, sa public in general. And... Um, sana maimbitahan ka namin in the future, lalo na pag-usapan natin yung food fraud na tinatawag natin na isang krimen. And I'm sure marami kang uh, masashare na patungkol nga sa food fraud on a scientific perspective. Kami criminal justice, criminology perspective, ikaw naman, uh, food science perspective. Yes, Christian. Sure, sure no. Kasi nga, um, food fraud, it's a food crime. So, yung criminology theories can be applied to the food industry, such as itong ang food fraud and food safety, yung mga food adulteration. So, it, I would be glad to work with you on that in the future. Wow, yan. So, aabangan natin yan, ha? yung mga viewers natin sa kanilang mga bahay. Ayan, may aabangan na naman kayo na new YouTube video with Chris Saka. And this is not the last time na makakasama natin siya dito sa ating channel. So, maraming salamat, Chris. At uh, mabuhay ka. You made us all proud. Ako, I'm one of the millions of Filipino na makakapanood sana ng YouTube video na to na magkasabi na you make, you're one of the many reasons why we're proud to be Filipino. Ayan, uh, Chris, may gusto ka bang i-shout out? A shout out po sa aking family dito sa bahay. Nandito sila sa bahay. So, hi po. And I would also like to greet yung aking mga colleagues sa UP Mindanao as well as my friends in the US, friends sa LSU, and of course, ang ating Fulbright Shed family. Ma'am Gigi, hello po. Hello, Ma'am Gigi. Hope you're proud of us. <laughs> 
fraud po tayo kay Christian. So, yun po. Thank you very much again for this opportunity. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat, Riza. And see you again soon. Bye-bye. Ingat ka dyan. Bye. Ingat din. Ayan, at natapos na rin ang ating pinakaunang uh, Tech Talk na kung saan na-feature nga natin ng napakahanga-hanga na scientist mula sa Davao na si Ms. Kriza no, na naka-invento ng probiotic beer. Now, uh, sa mga next Tech Talk natin, mag invite pa tayo ng iba-ibang mga scientists sa ibang larangan para inspire tayo na mag-engage din into science research at tagdagan yung ating mga kaalaman para hindi lang limited yung kaalaman natin sa criminology and criminal justice and forensic science. At kung marami na naman kayo natutunan na kaalaman mula sa video na to, uh, please don't forget to like but also subscribe para naman ma-notify kayo whenever may mga videos na katulad nito. Maraming salamat for your continued support and kita-kita tayo and hope to see you in our next YouTube video. Bye-bye!